What up, witches and warlocks? Are you ready for more chilling adventures with our favorite witch, Sabrina? I know I am. So come join me here on Comic Universe. What up guys, it's Jay here from Mr. Jay's Reviews for the Comic Universe and welcome to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. I'm Dr. Jay, I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know, I printed it out myself. So, welcome to another edition of Netflix and Beyond, and this time we will be going over The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Season 2, or I guess you would more likely say The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Part 2, because that's what it's labeled on Netflix. And uh, this will be a spoiler-free review. Uh, later on today on my main channel, Mr. J's Reviews, I will be coming out with a spoiler version. We're going into full detail. But for now, I'm just going to give you kind of the broad strokes of what happened, what I liked, what I didn't like, and just kind of overall non-spoiler general thoughts. So, in case you are unaware, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is a Netflix original series that is based off of the recent Chilling Adventures of Sabrina comics um, created as part of the new Archie line. And this series was created by Riverdale showrunner Roberto. I can't pronounce his last name, to be honest with you, uh, so I'm not going to try, but his name is Roberto. Uh, and he was actually one of the writers behind Afterlife with Archie, so, you know, he's no stranger to horror. And... First things first with Sabrina, I absolutely loved it. So, the comics are extremely dark, extremely morbid, and this show definitely has that vibe, but it has that nice in-between of that 90s sitcom mixed with a lot of black comedy, which I find a lot of fun. Um, I think the ants are a lot better in the comics than they are uh, or in the show than they are in the comics, but, you know, that's just my opinion, and the actress who they got to play Sabrina is phenomenal, she does such a great job, same with Ross Lynch playing the role of Harvey Kinkle, you know, awkward, small town teenager, fantastic, the supporting cast, all great, um, my boy Ambrose, also fantastic, um, uh, I love... All of it. My only tiny, tiny nitpick about season one was that Salem didn't talk. And Salem still doesn't talk here. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I would have liked Salem to talk, but, you know, it's not a deal breaker. So, what did I think of season two of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? Well, they really stepped it up, man. They not only dove into more witch traditions, but we got to deal with the aftermath of season one now i'm assuming if you're watching this you've already watched season one or don't care about spoilers about season one so spoilers ahead for that but season one sabrina harvey ross and Susie managed to save the town of greendale from a series of vengeful witch spirits and in order to do that, Sabrina had to fully give herself over to Satan and sign her name in the Book of the Beast, becoming a full-fledged member of the Coven and a real witch, as it were. And so, basically, she kind of has to deal with that. And so now she's more exploring the witch side of herself and seeing what that side of her world is like. Um, actually participating full-time in the academy and its activities, all the different festivals and stuff like that. Obviously, her and Harvey are over, so she's finding uh, some new uh, warlock love, uh, as it were, and that's pretty interesting. And we get to find out more about kind of the politics, the motives behind people like Father Blackwood. We get to find out more about her father, Edward Spellman, and what his work really entailed, and a bunch of other stuff. It's really interesting. Again, I don't want to go into full detail. Also, we get a lot more characterization for the character of Madame Satan. We even get to find out what her real name is, and what role she plays in relation to the Dark Lord, which is pretty awesome. 
A big theme throughout this season seems to be relationships, and in particular, abusive relationships and control. And we get to see that with the Dark Lord and Madam Satan. We get to see that with Father Blackwood and Zelda. And we get to see that a little bit with kind of a subversion with Sabrina and Nick and their relationship. Because Nick actually kind of is a more positive example because he's actually supportive. This is what you're supposed to do in a relationship. So I think that's really cool. I like that they uh, did that and kind of showed that not all warlocks are kind of misogynistic traditionalists. So that's pretty dope. Also, we get more story with our hometown cast of like Susie, Ross, and Harvey. So, Susie, I'm not going to spoil too much of her story, but I think with as new of a subject as this is for television, you know, as rare as it is for this kind of subject to be covered, I thought it was handled extremely well. It didn't seem like it was trying to like shove a message down our throats. I thought it was handled very organically and I really liked it. Roz's story with her powers and her sight continues in this season and I think it was handled pretty well. Um, her relationship stuff I kind of have mixed feelings on. Not going to go into detail about that because that's more of a major spoiler. Same with Harvey. I don't want to go into where he falls in the relationship spectrum. Oh, post Sabrina but you can still still tell that they care about each other but they are genuinely trying to uh, move on and find something different so that's pretty interesting to see where that goes um, personally I think Harvey and Sabrina were good first loves but I think you know these new relationships are good for both of them Harvey and Sabrina so We'll see where that goes from here on out. And we get to see kind of the evolution of Sabrina's powers as time goes on, which is pretty interesting. So, by the end of it, we get to really see what the Dark Lord is capable of, which is pretty awesome. And Sabrina has to really step up. And I gotta say, it was pretty intense. This season has no shortage of dark moments and gore as it did with season one. I thought it was pretty awesome. It definitely had some great dark comedy in it. Some good general comedy as well. I liked all the horror vibes and allusions we got. Some little Archie Comics references. Even a Riverdale reference here and there that I managed to catch. Overall, it was a really good season. I enjoyed it. And I highly recommend it if you enjoyed the first part, or I guess you would call it season one. So definitely go check out season two if you enjoyed the first one. But uh, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what we do here on Comic Universe, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Also, don't forget to hit the like button on this video as well so let us know you enjoyed it you know it uh, helps provide a little bit of magic for us here on the channel as well so be sure to do that for us we'd really appreciate it and like I said if you like what we do here and you want to see more from us be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video uh, myself DPZ and C Dubs have a lot of great content coming up obviously Shazam is this weekend C Dubs already put up the spoiler for your view of the movie I will be seeing the movie on Saturday so that will be when I put up the spoiler review hopefully that'll be up on time but uh, I'm definitely gonna try my best but until next time guys this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews for the comic universe and hopefully I will see you guys next time in the universe on Netflix and beyond peace <laughs>